I was recently watching Thunderfoot's debunk of the Tesla Roadster and the Semi. Elon was telling so many lies. I started to think, why would anybody do this? I mean, one white lie, but so many of them, why? Every truck we sell will have enhanced autopilot as standard. Uh, even if you're in the truck and you have a medical emergency, the truck will stay in lane and gradually come to a halt and put on the emergency if it doesn't hear. And it stuck in my head. Why would Musk tell so many lies? My first guess was he was trying to pump up Tesla, SpaceX, Solar City, and keep everything alive. Because if one company goes under, people may start to doubt if he is a genius. Then I came across narcissism. Finally found a broker on Wall Street that you can trust and who can consistently make you money. Sound fair enough? No. So let's check if Elon Musk is a narcissist. There are seven signs. Mm -hmm of narcissism, and you're also going to tell us how to spot them. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just go one, through them one mm -hmm. by one. Yeah. What's the first one? So first one's mm -hmm. lack of empathy. Okay. And that's a defining characteristic. Uh, uh, that's a defining characteristic of narcissism. In fact, if I see that somebody has really well-preserved empathy, I'm like, nah. Is demon mode a lack of empathy, or is it something else? Demon mode certainly has a lack of empathy, and there are times when Musk very much has a lack of empathy. Uh, he says, Sometimes, not having too much empathy can be beneficial. Did you hear that? Not only doesn't he have empathy, he thinks it's a good thing not having that. The second is entitlement. Entitlement is that sense is that, that somehow someone is, should deserve special treatment, even if it's to the detriment of other people, that somehow they are different than everyone else. Again, sort of special by dint of their, their existence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to I be clear. I do not respect the SEC. I do not respect them. I am Tesla was in a precarious financial situation, and I was told by the banks that if I did not agree to, to settle with the SEC, that they would, the banks would cease providing working capital and Tesla would go bankrupt immediately. So that's like having a gun to your child's head. Uh, so I was forced to concede to the SEC unlawfully, those bastards. Um, <laughs> And you know who also didn't like the SEC? You piss up the SEC's leg, you end up with your tits in a ringer. Do you not worry about it? I have the SEC under my committee. I do not respect the SEC. I do not respect them. <laughs> Are you serious? Um, the third is grandiosity. It's sort of an unrealistic assessment of one's capacity or abilities, or they talk about a grandiose world that they don't even live in, the things that they may someday do. You know, someday I'm going to climb Mount Everest. So they talk about it as though it's something they're actively doing or have already done. So it's, it is a, it is again a very unrealistic, almost fantasy-like version of the world. They'll often talk about having one day the greatest love affair, or the greatest love story, or the greatest wedding, or the greatest career. It's, everything is just bigger and larger than life. Autonomous cars will definitely be a reality. A Tesla car next year will probably be 90% capable of autopilot. Like so, 90% of your miles could be on auto. Only a month away from having uh, autonomous driving, at least for highways, for safety than a person right now. Than a person by the end of next year. I feel very confident predicting uh, autonomous robo taxis for Tesla next year. So the houses you see around you are all solar houses. I don't know if you know that. I don't know if you, did you notice? Yeah. I became skeptical of Tesla in that very moment when I saw him holding up those tiles that I knew were fake. Now in 2023, we see here that Tesla chart was right. They've only installed 3,000 these tiles in total since 2016. What a great achievement. And then... Remember Hyperloop? It was supposed to be huge. It was supposed to be huge, but then he abandoned the project a few months later. And recently they removed the tube for testing. Number four is superficiality. There's a, a very vapid quality to narcissism. They're really only concerned about appearances, how a person looks, um, what a person owns, where they live, what they drive, what they carry, the shoes on their feet. It's very, very superficial to the detriment of other characteristics. Somebody out there might say, oh, but I love fashion, but they're a very sweet, kind person. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about superficiality with absolutely no depth behind it or judging people solely on superficial um, characteristics mm -hmm. and quality. Mm -hmm. AI, I mean, you seem somewhat frustrated with them. You were one of the big contributors early on. The, the reason, I, I am the reason OpenAI exists. Um, How much money did you give them? 
Um, so, uh, I, I, I'm not sure the exact number, but it's some, some number on, on the order of $50 million. The only thing I found that he can be envious is maybe this part. But it kind of checks out because he did invest quite early in the company and quite a huge part of the chunk of the money. Even though 50 million isn't a lot compared to the 1 billion they collected, but it was early on, so let's give him this one. Let's cut him some slack, which is good. Let's go to the next one. Number five is chronic seeking of admiration or validation. It's the constant need to be, get, be receiving praise, recognition, and nowadays that's really amped up because of social media, that they have to get likes and they have to get lots of traction on their social media page and they need lots of followers and all of that. So it's that constant need, but it, it never stops. If you're even close to them, like you're their child or you're their partner you have to constantly be telling them how wonderful they are and how great they are when the doctor said this it all clicked for me all the stuff he made up was for admiration you know a few claps isn't enough you need a ton of them right that's my theory why he does all of this i got an ambulance it, it's going to take care of you it's going to take care of other cars it's going to take care of pedestrians this is a massive increase in safety yeah, the truck does precisely none of that. The truck will automatically stop jackknifing because it's got independent motors on each wheel and it'll, it'll dynamically adjust the torque on each wheel so that jack, jackknifing is impossible. <laughs> and that's why we are guaranteeing that this truck will not break down for a million miles. It won't break down for a million miles because it has four independent motors. You can lose two of those four motors and the best thermonuclear explosion proof glass. And this is the feature I like best. Sure? Yeah. Thermonuclear explosion proof Oh my fucking glass. Thermonuclear explosion proof <laughs> glass. Thunderfoot is a true genius. Ain't no doubt about it. I love that channel. You should definitely subscribe. And common sense skeptic also. Let's go to the next one. Number six is their tendency to rage. They don't, they don't have good command of their emotions. They tend to be all over the map. And the one emotion they tend to manifest the most often is uncontrolled rage. That's often because they're so frustrated and they're so insecure and they don't have good ways of dealing with their feelings. So it's not unusual for them to just come out. When things don't go their way, they don't have any tolerance for frustration. So you'll see a lot of rage that comes out. Him losing his temper with one of his employees. Oh, one night in South Texas at the launch pad of SpaceX. It's a Friday night at 10 p.m. And everything's going smoothly. There's no launches being scheduled. And he looks, and there's only two people working at the launch pad. And all of a sudden, I see demon mode coming in, almost like storm clouds from the Gulf of Mexico. And I'm thinking, well, it's Friday night at 10 p.m. And yet he just reams out this guy named Andy, who was in charge of uh, the launch pad site. And he orders a surge. He orders 100 people to come in from different parts of SpaceX. Did you hear what he did? He ordered at 10 o'clock at night and a Friday a surge to work 24-7. Why? What's the point? From my research, do you know why narcissists do this? Because of attention. They love drama. They're addicted to drama. They don't know how it is when like it's peaceful and nice. They just have to make a storm. They have to stir up some shit. Just listen. Addicted to drama, he's addicted to risk. And whenever things seem to be going smoothly, he almost has a compulsion to stir things up. I've watched it happen a dozen times. And why do I think he's addicted to drama? It's because it was always in this house. His father was a bad father and always created chaos and drama. And this is what he's used to as a kid. He's reliving his childhood trauma from his father. There's no single Elon Musk. He has many personalities. Elon Musk's. Yeah, exactly. Almost multiple personalities. This demon mode in your mind. Demon mode is something that happened to his father as well. It's almost like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, where a cloud comes over and he gets into a trance and he can just be tough. 
in a cold way. He never gets really angry, never gets that physical, but coldly brutal to people. And he almost doesn't remember afterwards what he's done. So <laughs> Did you hear that? Multiple personalities, Jekyll and Hyde, addicted to drama, can't sit still, no empathy towards other people. Oh my God. And number seven, I'd really say is arrogance. It's, um, I'm better than you. And, and, and in some ways that sort of draws from the grandiosity, it draws from the entitlement, but it can come off as a snobbery, as a dismissiveness, as a devaluation, as an invalidation of other people, just sort of like sweeping them away. Next. Boring bonehead questions are not cool. Next. Called the Roadster basically a $109,000 concept car. What do you say to that article? Randy Spross is a huge douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go to YouTube. Sorry, these these questions are so dry. <laughs> They're killing me. Yeah. Like what? No, no, man. You're in charge of the servers and the programming, whatever. Like what is the stack? Keep things technical in my space, please. Take take it take it take me from top to bottom. What does the stack look like right now? What's so crazy about it? What's so abnormal about this stack versus every other? large scale system on the planet buddy come on give Wait. it to me all right so first off yeah. amazing wow Wait. you're a jackass the entrepreneur due to face the british diving specialist he accused of being a pedophile so with those seven, do they have to have all seven of those? You know, the DSM has a list of nine, which takes in most of those. You only need five of the nine, plus this idea that thing, life isn't going well, that right. distress, to get it in the DSM. I often, I'm actually a little more generous. I say, like, you need to have, like, if you have all, if you have five of those seven, you're in trouble. But the empath, the lack of empathy is the requirement. Yeah. To me, all, everything. So it's like that, plus four or five others. And, mm. come. and the amazing thing is, after... He's gone dark and been demon-like and really tough on people. He'll snap out of it. And then I'll ask him, what was right. that all about? And he hardly remembers it. So when you ask about what's it like mm. dealing with Elon Musk, I say, there are many Elon Musks in this book. So that's my analysis. So what do you think? Is he a narcissist or not? Type in the comment section. And also drop a like and subscribe for the channel. If you like this channel, you can support me on Patreon. Thank you for watching.